so we'll do the roll call first. Um, Emma Cornwell. Hi, Emma. Hi, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Kekos. Here. Kathy Murray. Here. Uh, Councilor Labar Mary and Labarge. Here. And Rodney couldn't make it today. And also Michael Morton or Marilyn are not here yet. So that's where we are with that. And I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so next will be the public comments. Who would like to speak? Uh, Amy, would you like to speak? She's on mute. Yeah, I think Amy's on mute, yeah. Give me... I... Yeah, you can unmute. Yeah. Um, if Ben, Ben and Meg's hands are up, I'll, I can go. After oh, I'm sorry, them. I didn't notice that. I'm sorry, I didn't even see that. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's let's start there then. Uh, if that's okay, yeah. So we'll start with you, Ben. Hi, I'm Ben Kalish um, from Forbes Library, also from Northampton. Um, but I am speaking today on behalf of the library with an announcement that the trustees of Forbes Library recently approved a trial period. So this is only certain for the next fiscal year, but of a $40 stipend for people who come to attend our advisory board meeting. So that includes our accessibility advisory board, um, newly christened, it was the disability advisory board, it's now the accessibility advisory board. Um, so anyone who comes up, we do have to have you fill out a tax form um, for you to receive that, but there is $40 per meeting for anyone who attends, the, you know, not me, I already work for the library and they already pay me, but <laughs> any of you all or anyone who you think would be good to have their voice on, this could make a difference if it makes it a little easier to attend. It is um, available and I want you all to know that. Thank you, Ben. Ben, I have a question. Um, is it going to be on Zooming also? The meetings are going to be hybrid probably forever, um, <laughs> certainly for the foreseeable future. So folks can come into the library to attend our advisory board meetings, or they can attend on Zoom. And when is that? What's the date? We don't have a date yet for our next meeting. We meet three times a year. Um, and we um, send out an email to our email list um, to kind of poll for the next time of like maybe two months out from the meeting to select the date. And if anyone here wants to get on that mailing list, let me know. I can make sure they get added to it. Thank you. Thanks. Meg? Meg Bandara? Hello. Hi. Um, so I just had a couple comments from, uh, I watched the recordings from the summer meeting in July and the September meeting. And um, I really just wanted to say about the accessible trail that I would really love for Northampton to have a plan in place to present that plan. Um, I have not known personally of another project of this scale or with this dollar um, amount attached to it that doesn't have a clear plan. Um, Keith said in the July meeting that it was sort of being done piecemeal. And my experience is that when you do accessible trail piecemeal, it's not very accessible and it's not very successful. Um, and I think having a plan would just really cement that Northampton is serious about it and that they do see it as a priority and a place where we're lacking. And I hope that that um, happens. And then uh, on the food, uh, sorry, on the accessibility for downtown subcommittee, I just wanted to mention, um, I love that idea, um, but just wanted to mention that food allergies, serious food allergies are, are considered a disabling condition. And a few restaurants in Northampton do a really good job of accounting for food allergies, like um, Eastside Grill and The Roost are great examples. They have a binder with ingredients. But some are really not great at it. They do things like um, turn away people who have food allergies. Some restaurants have put signs up saying that they don't serve people with food allergies. And I would really love to see that also included in a more inclusive downtown. Uh, and very briefly and finally, 
electric cars. We don't have any accessible car charger spots in the town. And um, it's, we don't have to have them necessarily signed and designated as being accessible, but they should physically be accessible. The most accessible one we had was at the fire station and with the redesign of the parking lot, that charger has actually become less accessible than it used to be. So it's something that we've gone backwards on in our city. So it's just something that I would love to see change. Thanks. Thank you, Meg. And I totally agree about the accessible trails. I, I also think that we should talk more about that at some point and have a plan about that. Just, just wanted you to know. <laughs> um, let's see who's next, Amy. Hi. Hi. Hi, Amy. Hi. Um, so, of course, I um, would love to echo uh, Meg's thoughts on the accessible trail, uh, the Rocky Hill Greenway project um, that I brought up last month. Um, but my thoughts and uh, for this meeting, and sorry if they're a little they're incoherent, I didn't take notes, so this is, you know, ad-libbing. Um, but my thoughts in attending um, these meetings for maybe what, the past six or eight months? As, um, as a member of the public and kind of seeing how the meetings go and the rhythm of things. Um, it's led me to some questions about the Disability Commission. Um, and I'm, I'm really, I guess, feeling kind of confused about the role of the Disability Commission. And is it an advocacy group or is it a place where um, people from the city can come to get input um, from people from the disability community? Or is it both? Or is it something else? Or, you know, I just don't feel quite um, clear on as a member of the public and someone with a disability in Northampton, how do I use the, the Disability Commission? where so like meg's idea and thoughts on the an accessible charging station so where does that go where does that land um is does anything happen with that idea or is it just a place to voice these concerns and then nothing happens like um yeah so so those are you know kind of like what, what is the disability commission for? What is the role? What is the charge? Um, so if, if anyone can direct me to people I should be asking those questions to, um, that would be great. Um, and then another thought I had is just about the public comments. Um, I understand why public comments might be at the beginning of a meeting um, you know, you don't want the public just kind of taking over a meeting and then you can't get through your agenda, you know, what you're trying to accomplish during the meeting. But um, as a member of the public, it's, um, it has felt unsatisfying maybe <laughs> to make public comments and then to have to wait a whole month before I can respond to what gets talked about in the meeting after I make the public comments. And sometimes um, what I might bring up doesn't get talked about or discussed, which is fine, you have an agenda that you're, you're sticking to. But again, going back to, well, so what happens to the public comments? Um, do they just, you know, it's like the dead letter office, do they just kind of go out there and sit? Or does it come back into the fold later into your meetings? Um, so I'm just kind of, I guess, just raising that as a, I don't know, a thought, you know, something to think about of how, how does the Disability Commission engage the public and, and what happens with those comments? So sorry for the meandering. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. 
Thank, thank you for saying all of that, Amy. Um, I have a lot. I have a lot of opinions about the, what you said, also. But we are, yeah. I, I don't know if I can share all that right now. But I agree with a lot of what you said, and that it can be very difficult to, as, as a disabled person, to bring your what you think is important to the commission, and then the city seems to have another agenda in mind um, um, that doesn't include what your what your concerns are. It happens a lot, and I agree. So I th and I think that we need improvement on that. And I'd also just like to remind everyone that Amy has applied to the commission like six months ago and still has not heard from the mayor's office. When Emma and I applied to the commission, it took weeks. Like within weeks, I was I was on the commission. And for some reason, months have been going by. We've been reminding the commission every month that Amy and other people, at least two other people, have applied to the commission and have heard, and have heard nothing from the mayor. So I think it might be time for the mayor to at least say something. Yeah, Marianne, Cap Council of Barge. Yes, thank you. Um, I can answer that one. Yes, the whoever the mayor selects in her office, it automatically comes out of the office and it is sent to city service. We have not received anything, period, okay? So once it is, say sent out of the mayor's office comes to city it comes to city council it's on the consent agenda for a referral that's when it comes to city service then it is our charge to go ahead and interview whoever whoever puts in for any board commission or whatever then we go ahead and interview that individual or individuals and we make a recommendation to full city council with a positive recommendation, or if not, if there's a problem, we pull it out, talk about it, and then make that recommendation to full city council. And it would be placed on the consent agenda. So I can see how you feel about this, Amy. It's That's quite a while, and I can't answer to what the holdup is in the mayor's office. We don't handle the applications. <laughs> well, I just, I agree with, yeah, it's true that we don't handle the applications, but I feel like enough time has gone by where we as a commission could maybe agree that it's been too long. I mean, it is, like, but you I mean, there's, I went through the same process and so did Emma and other people on this commission. We went through the same process and that took about three weeks, yeah. not even, not even a month, I it's can't... Been six months. They haven't even gotten an email back from the mayor, not right. even I... an email. I, think I mean, that's that, ridiculous. Right. I think it's up to the ADA coordinator to investigate what the problem is here. Yeah, I think so, too. Exactly. So maybe Keith can notify. Well, Keith, last time we talked to Keith, he said he wasn't comfortable contacting the mayor about that. That's what he said. So I think maybe I'll call, I'll call the mayor myself. Hmm. I'll figure it out before the next meeting. So um, I, I will... I'll give some responses, not satisfactory, I apologize, about Amy's concern and Jeremy and other commission members' concern. Um, so part of the reason why we got this very, like, you know, very, very um, abbreviated, a very structured approach is it, it is state open meetings law. Um, the idea is you don't want to it add new public matter items to an agenda when that it hasn't been just introduced to the agenda. So that's that's why the public comments. So I, I think one thing we can I can discover with Keith. Again, Keith is the ADA coordinator. I'm the temporary fill-in while he's away. Um, one thing we can do better is like uh, actually introduce these public comments uh, as agenda items if the commission agrees uh -huh. that they are more serious matters. So we can definitely do that. Um, so but a Amy, uh, the the dilemma with these delays is uh, these are all unpaid volunteers who are giving up their valuable time uh, to these meetings. So the amount of uh, energy and time they can give is limited. So that's that's why uh, part of the reason a lot of commissions are on a monthly cycle. But I think one thing that we can really try to do is uh, these uh, serious public inputs. Uh, we, we can introduce them as uh, uh, agenda items for next meetings. Uh, that's, that's sort of kind of required by law. We can't just improvise an agenda item right at, right at the same meeting. And uh, as for the mayor's delay, I mean, 
So I can't <laughs> speak for Keith, but mayor is technically our boss. Um, we don't want to like, we don't want to give them too much pressure about why the delay is happening, but I, I hear the concern. So if there's been a, a six month delay, um, which does seem a little long, but that's my opinion. Um, maybe there is some some time for some action. I can, I'll talk to Keith and uh, we can try to have, find a, a gentler, gentle way to remind them or try to accelerate the process. You, you don't want to risk any like acrimonious relationship between our office and uh, the mayor's office. But, well, I, the mayor isn't my boss, so I'm not afraid to ask. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy, Chair. I, I um, want to remind you that um, we do have a, a building commissioner, Jonathan Flagg, and uh, who, you know, um, so um, just want to remind people of the time. And unfortunately, I apologize, but I do have a hard stop at 425, okay. I'm sorry, 5, 525 for another meeting. So uh, I just want to remind people of the time restraints we have, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. So uh, the next item is the approval of um, September 13th minutes from our last meeting. Move to Motion. approve. Okay, Sec uh, I second that. Um, let's see, so Emma, do you approve? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. Kathy Murray? Yes. Thank you. And Mayor Council LaBarge? Yes. Okay. And then so now we can begin our discussion with Jonathan Flagg, building inspector. Hi, Jonathan. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? I'm doing well. Excellent. So uh, I'm not really sure what you're looking for, but uh, what I can start with is just give me a little bit of background on myself. Okay. Uh, again, my name is Jonathan Flagg. I'm the building commissioner for the building department. I have worked with some of you before, uh, Councilor LaBarge. <laughs> um, <laughs> And um, I have been in this job, not in Northampton, but been doing this, uh, this type of work for about 15 years now. I'm fairly well versed on the Architectural Access Board, uh, which is the, the Massachusetts version of the ADA. Um, it's, it works along with the ADA. And what it comes down to is whatever code is more stringent is the one we use. So the ADA may say something, but if the AAB has a, a section of the code that is more, uh, more strict, then that's the one we're using. Um, some of the things that I don't get involved with um, are some of the things that the, the uh, uh, American Disabilities Act does get involved with. And, and that's, it, that's a fine line. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's a little bit of, of my background. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer. Um, could you tell us more about the, uh, the AAB regulations, um, and like how you enforce them and, okay. and, you, and how do you train like your employees about them? Okay. So the architectural access board was developed back in 1978 and I believe the last, uh, update was in 2006. What it is is more for um, um, working side by side with the building code to make sure that when uh, commercial buildings are are being built or renovated, that they follow the uh, the Disabilities Act uh, guidelines uh, to make sure that uh, you know. For example, that the, the hardware in the doors is appropriate, uh, the path of travel to get there, you know, to uh, get into a building, you know, the, the ramps, the, um, the entryways. Um, also, was, uh, one of the big ones, of course, is getting into the bathrooms, make sure the handicap accessible bathrooms um, are the appropriate size, they have the appropriate fixtures, the appropriate signage. Too many people put the signs for restrooms on doors. It's not legal it's, it has to be on the handle side of the door at a center line of, of uh, 60 inches uh the door handles have to be lever actuated instead of you know the old style grab and turn um things like that that's those are some of the things that that, 
that I deal with parking spaces, the size of parking spaces, location to make sure that um, parking spaces are located as close as possible to the the uh, the accessible entrance to a building. So, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask a pretty specific question, if you don't mind. Um, so, a few months ago, there was a building on Strong Ave is 41 Strong Avenue. Um, yeah. That's where the Honey Dispensary, Bishop's Lounge, and Molino's Restaurant is. Um, yep. So that building, um, I don't know if you were aware, but um, it actually was the cause and the inspiration for a march and a rally that we had in April. Um, yeah, because, yeah, because the, the building used to be accessible and 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 then it became inaccessible. And um, Actually, so, hold on, uh, Jeremy, let me just... Uh... Sure. Let me just speak to that. That building was never actually legally. Yes, I'm aware accessible. of that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Legal, they, they, allow yeah people, sure. they allow people to come into the back of one business. Yeah, and, and, that, and then that the led to the area. elevator. Yeah, that led to the elevator, led which to allowed the them elevator. to get to Molino's and allowed, allowed them to get to Molino's and Bishop's when they had that door available. You can say it's not accessible because it was not ADA compliant technically because it was because the door is, is on top of a hill. I'm aware of that. I'm aware that it's not technically an ADA compliant door, but the door is how disabled people got in the building and it always worked. It never not, it never mm -hmm. didn't work. So it, you could, it, say, it it's, you could it, say it's not compliant, but that's just not true. I didn't say it was the door. The door was not compliant. It was not a legal. You cannot, you cannot have an accessible route through a business to get to another business. So it has to be common space. That was the reason it was not technically a legal accessible route. Okay. For example, for no, let me just let me just uh, throw a scenario out there. So. Um, what was the one? Was it Molino's on the first floor? What was the first Molino's, floor? Molino's, no, it was Sierra Grill on the first so, floor. Okay, Sierra Grill. Sierra Grill decided to close down, close up shop. Yeah. And the space was taken over by a bank. No, it was taken over by a dispensary. No, no, no. I'm throwing a scenario out there. But it was actually taken over by a dispensary. It's not a scenario. I understand. It has no difference. In my world, it has no difference whether it be a bank. In my world, uh, it's not a scenario. It's real life. There's a dispensary there now. And they took away the accessibility to build the dispensary. You signed off on it. You gave them a certificate of occupancy. Yes, I did. Why, yes. And why did you do that? I'm, I'm wondering. Because it was legal. Because it was legal. But, but what about the disabled people that can no longer go in that building? I guess it doesn't matter. Thank you, sir. Okay, what's your, your again... Well, you I was well, you, you know, I know you, you inter you interrupted me. You asked me a question and you okay. you, you will not let me answer it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So again, hypothetically, it was taken over by a bank. All right, which has hours of say nine to four. They lock the place up at four o'clock. So how are you gonna get in that place at nighttime to get through? Um, You're not that's when, because that's when you figure out a different solution. You, you, it's a building that can be accessible, and you didn't choose to. You didn't choose a solution that worked. You just chose to take the accessibility away completely. The only completely. no, no. The only thing I I was actually required to do was to make the space of the dispensary accessible, and that was it. Okay. I didn't have to make the whole building accessible. Well, that's great for you. It's too bad for us, though, right? Well, but, you I'm, know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying I disagree with what you're saying. I'm saying I have to follow the letter of the law. I well, you know what? Make, I cannot been... make. I cannot. Please. Yep. Let me finish. Okay, go ahead, sir. Or I'm just going to close. No, up. I, I really would like to hear what you have to say, please. All right. I don't have the authority because they did a renovation on the first floor space. I don't have the authority to make the owner of that building make the building accessible. Okay. Because it never um, was, it never was legally acceptable, accessible because of the path of travel, of going through a space to get to another space, to get to the elevator lobby room. You're using words like legally when actually the, you know, the owner of the Sierra Grill at the kindness of his heart made that building accessible. You know, he might've been aware that it wasn't technically ADA compliant, but he I'm wanted not I'm not denying that, Jeremy. I'm not denying that. I'm well, just saying, you know, what I'm saying is I can't force the owner of that building to make that 
the front, he'd have to do something with the front door of that building to make it accessible. I, I've been getting involved to, with ramping the sidewalk or doing something. I've been in touch with the Disability Law Center, um, the attorney, Tom Murphy, we've been talking about it for months. Mm -hmm. And he's already found a solution that he's offered to this to that that the building, and they have not accepted his offer to like to build a to build a side ramp or a, a, an entrance in the side, the side of the building that would make it accessible so he could go to Molino's Bishops and the and the the dispensary downstairs. But they no, haven't even that. gotten back to him. I saw yeah, that, and and, and, the, and the he problem believed, was in order to make it um, to follow the legal size of the of the ramp and everything, it would cut down on the sidewalk, and the DPW was not willing to do that. Well, he was also um, talking about a side, like in the alleyway, like in the side of the building, not in the front, but in the side of the building was another solution he was discussing with with that building. And anyway, I wanted to get too, too deep into the weeds in it, but but basically what he said to me was that um, that building is, is, is in violation of AAB regulations and it would not be difficult for a disabled person to file a complaint, an AAB complaint against 41 Strong Ave. So I'm just letting you know, it might, be, it might have been legal in your in your and in, in your in your view, but it is in violation of the AAB regulations, according to an attorney that I've spoken to, and so there is a fine for that. There's a thousand dollars a day. It could be up to a thousand dollars a day. So I, I'm well the, I'm well aware of the fine. I just always. I feel like you know you should be more be at least be a little more um, willing to to help out the disabled members of your community because we will use the law to figure it out. We will figure it out and make that building accessible. So you might as well just work with us and try to help us. That's all I have to say, basically. I, I, uh, I mean, I'm going to interject. I know this is an emotional issue. It's, it's not an ideal situation right now, but um, this well, is your I mean, we, we invited the building inspector here to talk about accessibility issues, right. and this is a major one. So, yeah, yes, and I, I mean, the discussion is fine, but I think um, I, I want to say let's try to restrain from like. Any like personal tax um, or I don't think I said anything personal, but right, yeah. right, yeah. Okay, um, I didn't take anything personal. Right. Okay. Great. So um, it seems like a lot of uh, in, a lot of facts are on the table. Um, I'm gonna stop, but I just want to remind people, and also there are other other people, public and members in the in the in the commission attending. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm done. I'm yeah. Right. Anybody that okay. wants to speak now can. Thank you. Thank you for your time. No, you're very welcome. Um, Councillor Labarge. I think you're on mute, Councillor. Sorry about that. I That's okay. Had, I just had another councillor who had given me a call, so I had to put it on mute. But anyways, I have to say that Nathan is absolutely correct here. Um, and Jeremy, I know where you're coming at, okay? Do you? Right in my heart. I know where you're coming at. And it's like when we have directors coming in, no matter what department it is, we need to have respect. I respect this man. I'm asking him important questions. I know you are, okay? But we also need to give them the ability to be able to speak with respect that's all that's and i have to agree with nathan here and i know jeremy we all feel the way you feel and it's upsetting i understand that and i agree we need to find a way how to make that building accessible and we need to work on that with with respect and i know we can do that it still has to be brought up i'm just bringing it up that's all i'm doing but we understand you're bringing it up but I feel that with no matter who comes in that we bring in. Who am I not respecting right now? Please. Who are you what? Who am I not respecting right now? No, I said, I think we need to be careful here on our tone of voice. That's all, Jeremy. We all understand where we want to move with this commission. And we're going to try to do the best that we can. That's all I have to say. Does Lillian have a comment? Lillian Roberts have a comment, uh, Chair? Hi, yeah, I'm on Hi, Lillian. Um, hello. <clears throat> um, thank you for having me. Um, uh, Miriam, I, you know, don't want to assume um, any of your identities or anyone's identities for that matter, but um, 
I'm just a community member, obviously, by the way, and I've never joined anything like this, but um, it makes me uncomfortable to hear, uh, and again, I'm saying I don't want to assume your um, identities, but to say um, that you know how Jeremy feels and to, that there isn't room for um, frustration and anger and that that is so um, real and that that is being called um, disrespectful doesn't resonate for me and it doesn't feel accurate um and so that feels important for me to say uh, and to acknowledge um I don't think those things are synonyms and I think that there needs to be care as to not um act like or to not um experience them or um view them or call the same thing um and then um and I think that um you know, as Jeremy is someone that is in a wheelchair and needs the space accessible, just, you know, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't say I know how he feels because I don't, and that sucks. Um, and that is enraging. And so to have a little um, frustration or, or, you know, I think it's appropriate and, and, and important to, um, for there to be space for that, of course. Um, and I guess I have more to say, but that gets my point across, or that's as much as I feel able to, us to say right now. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Really. Any, um, anyone else have something to say? Comments, questions? Questions for Jonathan? Okay. Um, well, I, I guess, uh, um, I mean, I mean, I know staff, I, I try not to, you know, involve myself directly, but one thing maybe I want to suggest is, uh, you know, maybe there's some, the most, you know, most effective way to move forward with the 41 strong building issue. How do you make it accessible and uh, um, what is the most effective and, uh, you know, proper way to do so? And if it is, if it is really in legal violation of ADA, that's a, that is a significant problem. So, but I think then, you know, maybe we could uh, put some energy into um, uh, an effective solution. And I don't know if that's already been discussed among this commission and the building commission and all the other involved parties. But again, this, you know, if, if people agree, remember this could become an agenda item as well. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Nathan. And, and yeah. I, pro I apologize for bringing it up now. It, it's actually kind of, it's, it's something that's been happening over the past few months. And I just learned this information like last week. When I spoke to, when I spoke to the guy from the Disability Law Center, Tom Murphy, and he told me about the how it was in violation of AAB regulations. I didn't know that until recently, so that's why I brought it up at this meeting. But I completely agree. I think we should keep keep focusing on it, and and they do have solutions to make that building accessible. We just need we need the city and we need the building owner to work with us. All right, Councillor. Yes. Um... This is um, for our building inspector, um, Jonathan Flagg. Jonathan, is he still around? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. Jeremy has brought something up, I think, that is very critical here of it placing it on our agenda, which Nathan had suggested. And I agree with that. Is there any way? Jonathan, that you could guide this commission and help us go forward with this because it is in violation as far as ADA. So I think right. with your expertise, would you be able to, if once we place it on the agenda for next month, is that when you want it on, Jeremy, next month? Sure, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I'd love that. Thank Could you. you come in and kind of help work with us, Jonathan, on guiding us on how to move forward to have the owners of the building make it accessible for people with wheelchairs? I will certainly do the best I can. And what I will also do, Jeremy, and, I, and please understand, I do really understand your frustration. I do. Thank, thank you. Um, you know, I understand that this is definitely a, a heated subject. Yes, um, it is. And don't worry, uh, you know, I'm not offended at all because I can't do this job and be thin-skinned. Uh, it would never survive. Um, 
I am still not completely convinced that this is a um, an illegal situation, but I will certainly do my best to get to the bottom of that to figure out one way or the other. And I will also contact Donna Lascalia from the DPW and see what we can't do to uh, allow the building owner to add a ramp to the front of that building where it's supposed to be and to make that accessible. That would be amazing. And then we can we can meet again next month or two months, whenever as we have the next meeting and we can we can update it and we can hash it out again. Um, but just know that I will work on it. And Thank again, you, sir. I, I, like I, I, yes. tru I truly, truly understand your frustration. I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you, Jonathan. And, and I, again, yeah, it's just it's just a matter I really care about. So I'm not trying. I wasn't trying to be, you know, too too <laughs> emotional you're, you're, about. You're, it. Jeremy, your passion is obvious. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> and Jeremy definitely is trying to help everybody who is in wheelchairs. I have many people who are complaining even being on crutches which they are finding it very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I know we all can work together, put it together and make it happen. And that's what we want to do, right, Jeremy? Well, let's make it yeah, happen. Yeah, definitely. Let's do, let's do our best to make that happen. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, you're very welcome. It's, it's part of my job. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. And then, um, so next uh, item on the agenda... Oh, dear, 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 if, oh, sorry. If, 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 uh, if there's nothing else uh, for me, then I am going to vacate. Okay. Thank you so much for your time and, and for answering all our questions and for being uh, very considerate and thoughtful. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. You all have a good night. Thank you too, Jonathan. Jonathan. Yep. Bye. -bye. Thank, you. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Chair, Chair Jeremy, uh, would you like me to address you as Mr. Chair? How would you like to be addressed? <laughs> oh, you can just call me Jeremy. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or in, no. Either way. Yeah. Uh, and, and Jeremy, just observing that uh, Lillian Robert still has one's hand up. And I don't oh, know if that's intentional. I'm so sorry. I didn't oh, see that. Okay. okay. It was not intentional. Okay. Oh, right. okay. Thanks, Lillian. That's okay. it. So then next week, we're going to talk about um, the updates on the accessible parking revolving funds. And design costs for architecture fees. That's a big one. Yes, I will try yeah. to be very succinct about it. Um, so the balance is forty thousand dollars. The uh, uh, what? Sorry, and I just noticed Amy typed the comment. Oh, Emma Cornwell. Um, hey, Emma, would you like to read your comment first before I proceed? Oh, okay, okay. So Amy, a Emma was just giving an observation to Emma. I, I won't read it because uh, Amy, Emma said, Emma waved her head no. Anyway, so I'll continue with the balance. Mm -hmm. So the accessible parking fines fund, um, we got $40,000 in balance. The auditor keeps track of the balance. Um, so we just asked them anytime. And the fines per infraction are typically 150 and there are usually two infractions per month. So usually you get $300 per month, fortunately or unfortunately. So these are parking fines for people parking in accessible parking lots. And the current regular expense, the only current expense is your sign language interpretation, about $100 a month. So there's always gonna be a surplus at this current stage. And uh, now the, about the grant we're talking about, I wanna clarify again, we discussed it last time, but I wanna clarify, uh, we are not committing any monies to the proposed uh, Massachusetts Office Disability Project. You know, the disability has committed the power to um, to to authorize how we use the fund. And what we are doing the last meeting to remind you again, where we are simply broadening the legally allowed scope of how you can direct the fund. So again, we are not committing any funds. But now back to the uh, MOD grant status. Um, we are still waiting on the grant. The expected time of response from the state, whether we get it or not, is sometime around in December. 
very, very loose. We are not exactly sure which date. But once that co grant comes in and we are confirmed, we can then start the, the actual design work. And that's when you can decide on how much you want to spend on the fund and whether it's on a proper use of the fund, the, the parking funds fund on the design. So the construction cost is estimated to be right now, again, it's a very loose estimate from a local construction company, $70,000. And architect fees, usually by state guidelines and other guidelines, is typically uh, up to 12%, 10 or 12% of the construction fee. So the current estimate of the design fee, which will come out of the um, the, the parking fines fund, if you approve, is going to be $8,400. So $8,400 in design cost and $70,000 in construction cost. But these are all, again, estimates. We won't know until we actually get the money and proceed with more accurate bids. And uh, so once we get the grant, you know, we'll have another meeting with the Disability Commission to authorize how to spend the fund. And lastly, kind of a good news. Um, this is about the snow removal equipment question Emma had asked. So the grant money has come in and the city is in the process of procuring uh, snow removal equipment for downtown only. Let me be clear, it's only for downtown snow removal, but the equipment is in the process of procurement. And so the, you know, I think it'll most likely be ready and be here uh, before snow starts falling and it'll be maintained by central services. So those are the, um, those are the uh, main updates uh, from, from the city staff. Thank you. Hey, and could could Thank I you. ask you a question, please? Yes, if I can answer, I will. If not, I'll defer to Keith or other members okay. of staff. You said that with the architectural going on at between 10 or 12%, yes. construction cost is sub Seventy thousand dollars. Yes, what I heard? that's yep. That's correct. Okay, architect at ten or twelve percent. The parking fine, which we would be using, would be eight thousand four hundred. Yes. So the parking fine, the the grant will cover hopefully the entire cost of construction. The parking fine is only to be used for the design cost. The grant, the MOD grant, I'll just call it the MOD grant for Massachusetts Office of Disability. The MOD grant doesn't cover design costs. It has to come out of other funds. That's why we asked to increase the uh, scope of where the fund can be used. So $8,400. So $8,400 out of the uh, accessibility parking fines fund. Out and of then the $4,000, correct? Say that again, counselor. Yes. From the $40,000, deduct to $8,400. Yeah. Yes. Ex exactly. Okay. Yes. So then the $70,000, is that all by grant? Or yes. Or are we looking at taking it out of parking fines? No, okay. it's uh, it's it's the grant only. Like um, okay. one risk factor, we have to pull it out of maybe out of other funds. One risk factor is seventy thousand is an estimate based on what the construction company gave us, but we're finding out construction costs keep going up. So yeah. um, you know, seventy thousand dollars might not be enough for the project. So we either reduce the scope of the project or more likely find other sources of funding. And uh, um, I think the Commission is already familiar, but there are possible other sources of funding. You know, I, I, I specifically work on CDBG, but there are other possible sources of funding. We, we hope it doesn't happen, but there, there may be an increase in the, the actual cost of the project. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if the commission doesn't want to use any of the parking fines fund on the construction, you know, that's, that's your, 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 that's your power. You can tell us and we will, you know, obviously look for other sources of funding. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for explaining that. Yeah, thank you. That was really helpful. Thank you. And you know, I I'm a sub. I'm a sub. So um, <laughs> if I say anything wrong, please forgive me. And uh, <laughs> there might be Carolyn and Keith running in later and correcting me. But just uh, putting a little bit of a disclaimer that some of my opinion, uh, my interpretations, might not be accurate. But this is the fact. Uh, these are the explanations I mostly got from staff. Thank you. Thank you. Cool, and that's great news about the about the snow removal device. That was cool. Yeah. Okay, so next is um the sidewalk inventory up updates, map and list of sidewalk conditions. 
Um, Nathan, did you have any updates on that? Or I'm not sure about that one. Did you? So we did. Keith, I think, sent out a PDF. Did everyone... oh, I did. I saw that. Yes, yeah, like twenty a twenty eighteen inventory of sidewalks. Yes. Right. And yeah. Yeah. How you know? Tell them. Tell me. How do you want to proceed? But I can share the screenshot of it if you want. Um. Right now. Sure. If you want to yeah. do that. I mean, it's a long document. Thirty. Yeah, I know. I wasn't sure what what we should focus like what you would want to focus on, but. Right and, um. Uh, oops. Give me, sorry. Sorry, I pressed the wrong key. Oh, that's okay. Okay, extend. There we go. Yeah, give me a second. Can everybody see the, the first page? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I only skimmed it um, so I can't give you the detail breakdown, but um, this professional company Alta was hired to do the analysis over like the sidewalks condition. And I'll just kind of go through it. It's an extensive document. It's most a lot of maps and uh, There's some narrative about it, how they, you know, assess the data mm -hmm. and the methodology, and uh, and they. This is part of the meat of the matter where they, you know, did the inventory of the sidewalks. And I believe there is a, a condition score of how it is, the potholes and other issues. So, you know, um, and I think maybe I won't go through the whole thing, but the city does have a. Uh, you know, so basically, city has a, a, a you know formally uh, researched inventory of the sidewalk conditions. Things obviously might have changed because this is a little bit old now. It's 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 from four years old, and I think Keith actually has been doing another like internal project on his own. And there's also another public member who literally like emailed us today about some of the sidewalk the, that person is concerned about. So we we have some data. Um, trying to see like, you know, so I guess uh, you can talk about how you want to act on this data or how do you want to, how do you want to move, move forward about this? Um, I guess I just had one question or, or like, I'm not sure if you could answer it yet, but um, like when they do the uh, inventory, do, do you know of any disabled people or pe like people in wheelchairs are like, are there like uh, giving them advice or giving them any, any pointers like about the sidewalks or is it just, do you think it's just people like I'm just wondering like how, like who who does the inventory and how knowledgeable they are about whether a wheelchair can get around or not? You know what I mean? Um, how accessible it would be? I I can't give you a great answer. Apologies. Yeah, um, I'm, well, no, that's okay. I was yeah. just curious if it might be cool. Like when we do the next inventory, if we could have like I I'd be willing to get involved or anybody else on the commission maybe. Oh, me too. Yeah, and trying to help like find the the most troubled troubled spots on the sidewalks. Uh, ben, you have something to say? Yes, I just wanted to say that if you look in the document, they discuss their approach and how they did it. They okay. don't go into full details about the technicalities because they use some proprietary methods, but, mm -hmm. um, but they still tell you a lot and they are using um, wheelchairs and other rolling devices with sensors attached. So they're they're trying to make objective measurements of the conditions, oh, and that is what is being reported. I see. And so then, it, it's not. Yeah. I mean, they go into some stuff about like areas where there's gaps and stuff, but where they're talking about it being compliant or not compliant, it's based on measurements of size, condition, height, et cetera, and how those compare to various standards. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, he's correct on what he's saying. Yep. But it's for an example, like I told you, um, Alex, Jarrett, and I and Keith did a site visit on Florence Road where Florence Heights is. And it is not ADA accessible. It is awful over there. And sometime, really, I would really like you to come on out and take a look at it. Okay. 
Yeah, I definitely would do that. Yep. Okay, anyone have any questions? Yeah, this would definitely be something yeah. maybe we could talk about more. We're, uh, Emma, were you going to say something? Yeah. Um, awesome. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know exactly like why this is being presented. Like, are we supposed to read it and suggest like the most important parts of the sidewalk to be repaved like what do what do we do with this information that's a good question yes i was kind of wondering the same thing because uh, <laughs> yeah we, we we received this document but we didn't we don't really know what we're supposed to do with it and plus there's so much information on yeah. here yeah. right yeah that you need to take time reading it mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, I think, think it should go back on the agenda and go over uh, some important things on it. Right, May, maybe that needs to be. Um, I, I think also our agenda topic was very brief. The title was literally "Sidewalk Inventory Updates, Map and List of Sidewalk Conditions." So, I think um, just want to remind you that we got this document, but um, right, it sounds like maybe a, a deeper conversation is in order. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we could talk about like the next inventory and, and like yeah, plan so that. This is five years old already. Yeah, so yeah, right, exactly. Right. It's pretty old. So maybe we could start talks and, and the next the next meeting. Maybe talk about how we could get how we can get more involved in that inventory process. Exactly. Okay. And then, um, so the discussion of accessibility in Northampton businesses. That's another thing we've sort of been discussing mm -hmm. in general. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll go to sort of like Emma's last question. I'm not really sure what we're supposed to do with that today. Um, I, we were talking about, we've been talking about starting a, a business uh, subcommittee where we talk about accessibility in businesses. Yep. Yeah. Um, Emma, do you have thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you're on mute. Sorry, I keep being on mute. Um, I feel like, well, so Jeremy and I are already this like subcommittee to talk about accessibility on for Northampton businesses. And I think we're supposed to compile like some recommendations, like general recommendations that we have for businesses to be more accessible um that's my impression of the project <laughs> right and i think that we put it on the agenda to sort of like see if any other members of the commission had suggestions of things they want to add or you know discuss to add um or, you know, so it's not just like me and Jeremy saying the, you know, what we think. Right. I think, Jeremy, when that was brought up, you volunteered, Emma volunteered, I volunteered, and I also said it would be great if Keith would be, in, be part of that also. Okay. And I think I also suggested maybe we could get um, the chamber to come in and help us. Oh, yeah, yes. Remember that would be that? awesome. Yeah, I've taught, I had a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce uh, oh, in, yeah. the, in, in, the other, in the other group that I'm in, the Disabled Movement. Um, yeah. we, we spoke with the, the Chamber of Commerce, and they were really interested in um, having a page on their website where they talked about, where they will talk about, like, telling people what what businesses are, are accessible and not accessible it's kind of like a map of the town and, and keeping people aware of like where the accessibility and not access where, where, where the inaccessibility is basically right and so you I can just go online and figure it out right and i think jeremy i also mentioned amy callahan, callahan yes okay she's excellent she deals with all the businesses in the city and i think she would be very very helpful we should bring her in to yeah meeting 
I think that's a good idea. Maybe we could um, invite her or, or someone from the Chamber of Commerce right. to one of our meetings. Somebody from the Chamber and invite her also because she does everything. Yeah, I mean, that's a big thing in, in this town is that a lot of businesses are not accessible, exactly. um, but you don't, but you don't find out until you get there, you know, yeah. like, and so the, and then you, and then you have to figure out what you're going to do after you've gotten, got, gone somewhere that you can't go. Right. So the point is that, yeah, if we could have like a website where like it told people what's accessible and not accessible, that would be amazing. I just wish that we could find all kinds of grants so that we could go ahead and add sidewalks. Yeah. And and reconstruct the sidewalks that need to be ADA compliance. And that is another thing too. Maybe we could suggest of finding out from Donna Liscalia from DPW, what would the total amount be to reconstruct the sidewalks that have not been touched for a long time that are not ADA accessible? That would be something very interesting because I think we do have people in the city who are excellent, excellent in grants and finding money. So I think Ben is absolutely correct that we need to look at adding on sidewalks and let's reconstruct the sidewalks that are not being taken care of out in the rural areas also. That is part of people's lives. And if they can't get out, this is pathetic. Definitely. Thank you, Jeremy. Yep. And um, I just, uh, I, I'm sorry. Any, does anybody else have any, anything to say? Anything to add? Um, one thing I was just going to say is that I think um, based on like, like stuff we talked about with Jonathan Flagg today, um, the Accessibility Access Board is something I've been learning about. And that's, that's what he deals with in his job. And I've been learning a lot more about it. And I think that in general, like the commission being more knowledgeable about that would be a helpful thing. Cause there, um, the, there is, we, we're all aware of the ADA and ADA compliance, but a lot of people aren't aware of AAB and their regulations and they have really strict right. regulations. Or stronger. Stronger regulations that they enforce. And um, for example, um, an, another business that I was looking at was the Dirty Truth. Um, and they only have ins inside their building, inside their restaurant, they only have high top tables where no one no one um, who is lower like with a disability can sit at a table. Um, there's not a single accessible table in the entire restaurant. Wow. And so I looked it up. I looked up the a AAB regulations and it says right there, like the first thing it says for restaurants is that 5% of your tables have to be accessible. And so that's, that's information I just learned like today. So, wow. you know, so I feel like we can use this information to help us when we're, yeah. when we're um, trying to influence businesses to be more accessible. I think right. they should be, they, we should make them aware that, that they might be in violation of these regulations uh -huh. and they could be, they could be fined money. We, we could, we could complain and, and they could be fined money. Yep. So, you know, you know what I mean? So I, that I think is really important. I do too. I think that's a good idea, Jeremy, that we have something put on the agenda of talking about the AB and how strong they are and how and what that enforcement is. Cool, thank you. Yep. And then, so I think um, now we just have other business not anticipated. If anybody has any any items, business that they'd like to bring up that were not, not on the agenda. Okay. Oh, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. We had you and I had talked about that the movie, right? Like, yes. a, did you talk with Chris at all? Not yet, but um, I think the movie that was was Crip Camp is that that's the movie we were talking about. It's a it's about the history of the ADA. That's that's the movie. It's a documentary. There's is a that, name to it. Maybe he might be able to help us out with that. I think it's called Crip Camp. That's the name of the movie. I'm pretty what sure. Crip Camp. C R I P Camp. It's about like it's a documentary about. The people that started the ADA. I have to. It doesn't sound familiar, but it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the name of the movie that you were talking about. How you would want to like? We should maybe have like a, a screening of it at some point. 
Yeah. With or the other commissions. Oh, um, Meg Bandar says that's a great movie. Yeah, I agree. That would be really cool if we could have a screening of it. Like maybe and maybe invite other commission. Yeah, like Strabhouse and Up and Where and Springfield and that. Yeah. We can use the big room at the senior center. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Uh-huh. So um, if we want to do that, should we maybe talk about it at the next meeting or like, yes. yeah, plan. okay. Yeah, we can maybe set that on the agenda for next meeting. Awesome. Anyone have anything else they want to say? Um, Amy is asking, can you invite the public? Is that? Um, for what? Oh, to the screen, I think to the screening. Oh, of, of the of course, yes, yeah, definitely. And Ben says, I know Gilad Mor Maron has been working to arrange a screening of Crip Camp. Oh, okay, that's cool. Awesome. I'll have to ask Chris if that's the one that he showed because that's the one that Chris showed, he was really hoping to encourage the schools, okay, the schools here in Northampton to put that in their history books. I'm pretty sure that's the movie, yeah. Hey, I haven't yeah. seen it in a while. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure that we'll double check. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think that might be the end of our meeting. Is motion to adjourn? Yeah. Like it. Okay. Um, Emma? Oh, wait, we don't have to. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, sorry. Sometimes we do this part, sometimes we don't, where we, where we uh, do, yeah. do the roll call at the end. Okay, yeah. So, Linda? Yes. Okay. Kathy? Yes. And Councilor Barge? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, our next meeting will be next month. Um, Tuesday, what's the date of the next meeting? Looking it up now. November 8th. Okay, cool. Awesome. 